story to tell. After World War II, the relationship between the U.S. and the Soviet Union became increasingly tense. Not many people know that the history of one of the most famous espionage scandals between the United States and the Soviet Union began with a peace initiative. U.S. President D. Eisenhower launched an initiative to increase the confidence of both sides, the Treaty Open Sky. The key provision of the treaty was that the parties have the right to conduct surveillance flights over each other's airspace. Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev rejected this initiative. The Soviet Union was not as powerful as the Soviet leadership often claimed. Although the Soviet Union had the atomic bomb and then the thermonuclear bomb, it took a very long time to achieve military parity with the United States and Western Europe. The American and Western intelligence agencies up to that point did not really understand the power of the Soviet Union. And if you sign the Open Sky Treaty, there won't be no more secrets. This was unacceptable for Nikita Khrushchev. To deal with this problem, the Americans assumed that they needed to find out the true military capabilities of the Soviet Union on their own. The method to do this was to contact area reconnaissance with the most Martin reconnaissance aircraft of the time, the Rocket U-2, nicknamed Dragon Lady. Rocket's spy plane could fly at altitudes above 20,000 meters. Not a single Soviet air defense system at that time could reach. Beginning in the summer of 1956, Lockheed U-2 High Altitude Reconnaissance aircraft began flying over the Soviet Union. They were constantly flying through major industrial and administrative centers, space, and air defense complexes. The U-2 had been in operation for almost four years. The Soviet leadership was too angry but had not found any way to punish it. Soviet tolerance peaked in 1960. On May 1, 1960, another U-2 spy plane took off from an airbase in the state of Peshawar, Pakistan, to conduct a reconnaissance flight. Soviet Air Defense Forces radars detected the target as soon as it entered the airspace. Soviet fighters took off to intercept, but as always, could not reach the target. At that time, the Soviet Union had only a single fighter that could reach its target at an altitude of 20,000 meters, the Su-9. However, it was not equipped with weapons, and the pilot did not have a dedicated fly suit for such altitudes. But perhaps due to being too angry at being offended many times, the Soviet Air Defense Command still decided to order the Sunai pilot to sortie, and the plan was to rush directly to the U-2, a suicide mission. Luckily for the suicide pilot, the Sunai could not reach the target because of running out of fear, so he was forced to return to the base. But this time, 
Yu Chu did not escape the banishment. At 8.50 a.m., the Yu Chu entered the operational area of an air defense missile unit under the command of Major Nikolai Moronov, armed with the latest anti-aircraft missile complex, the S-75 Tvina. The flight altitude of S-75 Tvina was about 25,000 meters, enough to shoot down the Yu Chu. At 8.53, this plane was shot down. Since the crew had no experience in using Tvina, they mistook a Soviet fighter jet for the target as U-2. As a result, another missile was launched and the Soviet fighter jet was shot down. The Soviet pilot died. The spy pilot Tong Chiu Chu was Francis Gary Powers from Kentucky. Powers quickly got caught. The Yu Chu was not completely destroyed and the Soviet Union was able to look at most of the equipment. When arrested, Gary Powers handed over a needle containing toxic substances used to cure himself in case of being arrested. However, Gary Powers did not want to die, and it was certainly a wise decision. The initial American response was shock. All of the sudden, the brand new US spy plane, the U-2, became obsolete overnight. On May 5th, Soviet leader Khrushchev announced that they had shot down an American spy plane, but he did not mention the pilot. Officials in President Eisenhower's administration said there would be no evidence left after the plane crashed, and they claimed it was just the weather gathering plane accidentally deviating. The letter published pictures of the captured pilot and evidence gathered from the workies of the spy plane held President Eisenhower's administration accountable. On May 16, a major summit between the United States, the Soviet Union, Britain, and France began in Paris. Issues to be discussed include the state of Berlin and the control of nuclear weapons. The event of the U-2 had led the Soviet leader to see that he could no longer cooperate with the U.S. and early hours after the Paris conference began, Khrushchev left the meeting. The evidence of the U-2 and the confession of Gary Powers led T. Eisenhower, a hero of World War II, not only be accused of conducting espionage, but worse than being accused of lying, which was too much for T. Eisenhower, a man who was too famous for his honesty. D. Eisenhower was enraged, refused to apologize to the Soviet Union, and bluntly admitted that the United States had been spying on and would continue spying because it concerns America's national security. Eisenhower viewed the YouTube mess as one of the worst failures of his presidency. The pilot, Francis Gary Powers, was released in 1962 in exchange for a captured Soviet spy. My story of S-75 Tvina and Lockheed U-2 answer. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel.
goodbye and see you again in the next videos